we asked people in Michigan why they got the COVID-19 vaccine. Because I am pregnant and we wanted to protect our baby boy. I believe in the science. Protect my friends and help our community. And I'm ready to get back to somewhat normal. I want to hug my grandma again. COVID-19 vaccines are tested for safety and trusted by doctors. Find a vaccine near you at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Catching a wave or camping under the stars for the very first time, there's no better feeling. And that's why Hyundai built their first ever sport adventure vehicle, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, to help you on the journey to all of your firsts. Santa Cruz combines the comfort of an SUV with the versatility of an open bed. Any adventure you imagine, Santa Cruz delivers. It's unlike anything on the road or off it. Thanks to available HTRAC all-wheel drive, and it's backed by America's best warranty. Finding more first it's your journey in the first ever hyundai santa cruz to show you how easy it is to file a claim with geico we hired a soap opera star gracious me my car has storm damage and i've had to file a claim could it possibly get worse will my claims team leave me for someone else someone less intense um no actually when you file a claim with geico you get your own dedicated claims team who promises to stay with you throughout the process. Oh, I've never known such loyalty. I can't wait for the second season. Geico, great service without all the drama. Hey, it's Outkick the Coverage here. Fox Sports Radio, Jonas Knox and Brady Quinn. And coming up on the show, it is officially game week in the NFL preseason. And there are two young quarterbacks that are getting all the buzz. We've got some bad blood in the NFC South. We say goodbye to the Olympics and Brady Quinn is really, really emotional about it. Michael Beasley rubbing the wrong knee. I know that sounds weird, but it's going to make some sense. A surprise with the Josh Allen contract. We got Peyton Manning in the Hall of Fame. A tribute to the late, great Bobby Bowden. All of that is coming up next here. It's Outkick the Coverage. Brady Quinn, Jonas Knox, and you right here on Fox Sports Radio. Outkick the Coverage live every weekday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern, 3 to 6 a.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio. Find your local station for Outkick the Coverage at foxsportsradio.com. Or stream us live every morning on the iHeartRadio app by searching FSR. Now let's get this party started. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio. We're going to take you all the way up until 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Radio. And we do so with the man himself, Brady Quinn. Jonas, the Olympics are over. All right, and we've got football looking at us square in the face right now as everyone else gets to partake in what is preseason football this week coming up. A lot of news circulating around the NFL, a lot of stuff to talk about, especially with some of these young guns. And I got to tell you, man, these younger quarterbacks coming into the league are better prepared than they've ever been with the way they were coached from a young age and how they've been prepped and prepared at the college level for this stage, for this next step, and I'm all about it, man. I I cannot wait to see them play. So you think with all the quarterback camps and all that stuff growing up, that really has fast-tracked these guys to getting prepared for the NFL? I I truly believe this. You know, I I remember when I was – so I got, got into college in 2003, and I remember, you know, the Manning Passing Academy barely. Like, it wasn't as national, wasn't as big of a deal as it is now, where when you get an invite, you go. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure if I even got an invite, and I was a Heisman finalist my last two years. I mean, th- that's how different it, it became over the course of the next 10 years. I remember going, you know, to different camps for schools when I was being recruited. So back then, you know, there, w- there wasn't really any one singular camp you went to. You went to each school when you were being recruited. Nowadays, you go to some of these you know, different quarterback camps, whether it's for Nike or Under Armour, whatever the case may be, and you go show out, and it's like all the schools come to you. They all come to these camps to see you, and the offers start flooding in afterwards. It's entirely different. And so these kids are so much more prepared technically, fundamentally, in high school entering into college before college to the NFL. And the way they prepare them at the college level, especially now with things being with NIL and everything that comes along with that, these kids are already brands. They already understand how to conduct themselves. They've been under a microscope forever. 
And, and yeah, there was this gap in time where I think once you hit like 2010, you really saw that private quarterback coaching world truly take off. And now all these this generation of kids that are coming into it now, there is better, there's best prepared as ever before. Like a quarterback coach in the NFL doesn't have quite as much as he used to to work with, and I think really even time to work with fundamentals. It's more remember, about scheme anymore. And you remember when Manziel got kicked out of the uh, Manning passing camp? Or was he was he kicked out or did he just leave on his own? I think he missed a bunch of meetings. I, and, I uh, thought he, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought he wasn't present. <laughs> um, I'll put it that way. I mean, that's a, I, I think he What do you mean have, you can't uh, bring a flask yeah. in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was the flask or if it was the uh, the, the hangover <laughs> afterwards. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I recall that. Uh, I, I, I love that sidebar, by the way. You just you got you just got to pour it on old Johnny Manziel. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like that was when you mentioned the Manning Passing Academy. I forgot all about that, but I remember that being a story. That was one of the quote unquote red flags of Johnny Manziel. That oh my god, he uh, they they asked him to leave the Manning Passing Camp early or something like that. I just I remember that vaguely from back in the day. Uh, yeah. Now you mentioned these young guns, all right? I was wondering how soon into the preseason before we were going to start to hear or see the push for Trey Lance or Justin Fields to get the calls a starting quarterback. And um, we didn't need any games in the preseason in order to get that call because here we are, and it feels like every single day something else pops up. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, uh, the Justin Fields stuff, um, and, and we can get to that here in a minute, but Kyle Shanahan even comes out this weekend – uh, last Friday and says, yeah, Trey Lance is going to get some plays. Like, like we're going to work him in with the ones. He's going to get some playing time. So this feels like the 49ers are at least – trying to work him in and with it being game week and we mentioned it it's game week it's it's the preseason people can dismiss it all they want but this is the first actual game reps for these guys the 49ers are going to be playing the Chiefs coming up this weekend I I wonder how much of that game is going to be dedicated to Trey Lance and how long before he gets the call because it feels like that's the push now well you've got a couple things you're monitoring with with the 49ers that's that's a bit different than I think how how you have to look at it if, if you're Chicago because we know Trevor Lawrence is going to start day one. You know, it may not have been officially announced. You know, I think at one point during the offseason, Coach Urban Meyer goes, you know, he, he's not ready yet, but he doesn't have to be. So they haven't necessarily anointed, anointed him that. But, but we know he's going to be. Zach Wilson, we know he's going to be. It's the next two in Fields and Trey Lance that we look at and say, that's those are the ones, maybe Mac Jones maybe as well. Those three are the ones that it's like, when is their time going to come? For Trey Lance, the the interesting thing about him is he does have this skill set to run the football that's a stark contrast to what you get when you have Jimmy Garoppolo. And and I'm not saying the offense is going to be that dramatic of a shift, but how defenses play them will be. And I think that's why Kyle Shanahan has already kind of hinted out there to teams, hey, look, we're we're going to sprinkle this guy in. And, and that's what makes the job harder for their opponent week after week after week because now they've got to prepare for Trey Lance every single game, whether he plays or not. They're going to have to waste time during the week to practice. It's, it's basically screwing over your opponent's defensive staff by saying that now. They'll get a glimpse of it in preseason of what he can do and everything else, and, and then they're going to prepare for – all these quarterback design runs that may never happen come the course of the regular season if it's just going to be Jimmy Garoppolo and if Jimmy Garoppolo starts the entire time, which, again, we don't know what's going to happen, but I can assure you this. In preseason, I think all these young guys are going to play really well to the point where it will put pressure on the starter, that veteran starter in front of them, and it will put pressure on the organization to want to play them. Yeah, I, I just – the 49ers have a Super Bowl roster, correct? I, I mean, yes. I, I, know, it, like yes. it, I just want to – I want to be clear here. This is a Super Bowl roster. A couple of years ago, they were, you know, a half a quarter away from winning a Super Bowl. They got devastated by injuries last year. I think it was week two against the Jets. They lost multiple players uh, in that game to which they called the NFL about the conditions of the turf, uh, which, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know what uh, what that would have done considering it's not natural grass. It's not like, you know, the one week it's, it's one, the next week it's the other I, I don't know what that whole point was but they were complaining about the turf the conditions Bosa went out etc etc well, so it's just yeah you'd be surprised because of how many different events and things that happen on those those field turf fields sometimes it doesn't have the proper cushion it should have 
and there's like that, you know, that that black rubbery stuff that comes up. Yeah. Sometimes there needs to be more of that laid down and then and then pounded back down into it. I, I remember being in Baltimore and they were testing, which that's one of the teams that actually went back to natural grass. But they were testing how soft or how hard the field was in different spots, like running all these tests. And obviously that day we ended up, you know, playing on it. But eventually they, they made that decision where I, I believe they, they changed the turf, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, listen, and don't they – isn't it like uh, tires, like uh, ground-down tires they put it's, uh, in there? It's, it's like a rubber. combination of things. So yeah. it, it's like ground-down tires. It's those shoes that you don't want to give up because they're, they're nostalgic to you. Oh, it's a good but point. You, but you keep running in them, and they smell like absolute B.O. They're the ones you have by probably the- a little bit of urine. Yeah, they're the ones that you have by the door, front door of your house that you talk about. Yes, so you bad. specifically. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you specifically with, you. with how avid of a runner you are. That's the kind of stuff they're pulling off from there. And probably any other little like odds and ends rubber stuff, you know. It, it could be literally anything. It, you, it could be off a backpack, off the, you know, the, the ceiling around your car door or something like that. Listen, man, I got foot problems. I know you got a uh, partially torn Achilles. I have got a turf toe from outer space. And when I run now, I look like a Yeti with a pulled groin. Like it is, it is an awful look. I have no speed. There's nothing there. There's no flash. There's no burst. Uh, it's just trying. To re- trying to get through it uh, and uh, and and hope that nothing falls apart. But you know what? We do it, Brady Quinn. Uh, we're out there. We're grinding. You and I, injury and all. You and I, with the wear and tear, just grinding away here as we get ready for Fox Sports Radio. But the point is, on the 49ers conversation, I I just do they have the guts? Because I was thinking about this. Do they have the balls, Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, to make the call and go with the unknown? And say, you know what? We got a Super Bowl roster. Why don't we just go with the young guy? If, if you know, let's let's rip the Band-Aid off. If we think Jimmy Garoppolo is not our guy, did they have the guts to just go with Trey Lance? And I don't know that they're in a spot with this roster that they can do it because it feels like the window is now for them to try and get a Super Bowl. I, I think there's a few ways of looking at this, but here are some of the reasons why I think they could justify it. How much they gave up to get Trey Lance, which was a lot. And so if they gave up that much, they can always use the narrative that he was our guy. We feel like he's just special. He's a different talent, and he adds a different dynamic to our offense, which he would. Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to run the way Trey Lance can, okay? John Lynch just went into the Hall of Fame. I think most fans, like when he puts on that gold jacket and walks up to a press conference, it might buy him a year in making that decision. I'm just saying. It might, it might buy him a year and make that decision where they're like, oh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a Hall of Fame player. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, w- I was going to say something and, and be critical, but now I realized it's John Lynch. Great speech, by the way, last night. Uh, but he's wearing a gold jacket. So I, I was going to say something. I'm not going to say anything now. Uh, they got that going for them. And then on, on top of it all, I think Kyle Shanahan is the type of coach that given what he's been through, the, the 28-3 to 3, margin of difference oh, beating that new england patriots before they end up losing the super bowl i think he kind of feels like he can do it every once at this point like i mean at the end of that game obviously some of his play calls and decisions were being questioned he it's not like he's really backed down since then so I, I honestly you know i think they could go that route if they wanted to i think it really comes down to how far apart jimmy and trey are from a mental aspect of the offense. Like, is Jimmy running the offense so much better than Trey from the standpoint of what Kyle wants to get them in the right plays? And if that's the case, then, yeah, that, that's going to be the advantage that that he, you know, unf- you know he's, he's no matter what, they're going to say, well, no, Jimmy, to start, if he gets hurt or something happens, then we'll, then we'll mix in, you know, Trey. But the wild card to me in all of it is going to be, if, if they're close, if through this preseason they're close – there's a saying in the NFL, if he's even, he's leaving. And that means, look, usually it's about a wide receiver and defensive back when they're running downfield. If he's even, you're throwing it downfield because you're expecting your guy to outrun his. And it's kind of like that in quarterback competitions. If the younger guy's even, he's leaving the older guy in the dust. And that's what they've got to determine here in the next few weeks.
It's uh, Outkick, the coverage here, Fox Sports Radio. He's Brady Quinn. I'm Jonas Knox. This is FSR. You can hang out with us as always on the iHeartRadio app. And we're going to take you all the way up until 9 a.m. Eastern time, 6 o'clock Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Radio. But coming up next, we've got some major bad blood in the NFL. We've got an all-pro. We've got a multimillionaire. We've got one of the best at his position. And we have got bad blood through and through. We'll get to that next here. It's Outkick, the coverage, right? here fox sports radio this this is outkick the coverage support for this podcast comes from clr clear if stubborn shower mold has you miffed or you're hard pressed to get rid of hard water buildup it's high time you kick your so-so cleaning products to the curb it's time to fight the clean fight with the clr clear family of products clr clear knows there's all kinds of dirty which is why they offer products to help you take on messes all around your home. So go on and fight off that countertop crud. Square up with those carpet stains. Go crazy on your garbage disposal gunk. CLR Clear has formulas to help you get the dirty deeds done. Plus, many of their products meet the EPA's safer product standard. So while tough on messes, it's still the safer choice for your family and the environment. Show dirt and grime around your home who's boss with CLR Clear and fight the clean fight. Learn more about the entire product lineup by going to clrbrands.com. Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I- I'll just take one more just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change. Like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. yeah, I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Catching that first wave, spending your first night camping under a starry sky, there's no better feeling, which is why I'm excited for the first ever Hyundai Santa Cruz, built to help you on the journey to all of your firsts. As Hyundai's first sport adventure vehicle, Santa Cruz combines the comfort of an SUV with the versatility of an open bed. It has useful features like an easy-to-use tailgate, lockable bed cover, and a built-in cargo bed beverage cooler. Any adventure you can imagine, Santa Cruz delivers. It's also packed with available tech like Bose Premium Audio and Hyundai Digital Key, which lets you unlock the door with just your phone. Pair all that with available HTRAC all-wheel drive, and it's unlike anything on the road or off it. And don't forget, like every Hyundai, it's backed by America's best warranty and includes up to three years of complimentary maintenance. Finding more firsts, it's your journey in the first ever Hyundai Santa Cruz. Oh, man. Can't you just picture Brady Quinn at the squat rack, Dublin <laughs> Kaufman High School, back in the day? You got like five or six plates on. You and some of the uh, the other meatheads at Dublin Kaufman High. I, just I, I was I was picturing jacked. more of uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, and, and Vatek playing this playing Sandman. Oh, is this their yeah. song? This is their song. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh no, yeah, oh, I did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so so at Vatek they play that because we were talking last week about uh, just different songs from around. What right, do they do at, right. What do they do at Notre Dame? They have like a song they go to. Is it Dropkick Murphys or something? No, I, I think it's changed over time. It's I, I'm not even sure what it is now. I mean, honestly, I was in a locker room before we came out, so I oh, wasn't. that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. yeah you it's like, just how would I know what we run on the field to? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I hear you, man. Yeah, I, I know. Listen, you don't have to tell me. I understand how that works, you know, being yeah. in the locker room and that when all this died. Like, I, I think, think you just and play I, a fight song. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you think you and I know, uh, know what the uh, intro is to this show? Because you and I are in the locker room getting ready to come out. Like and, that's and right. once the red light that's goes right. on, that's when we enter the room. We enter the curtain together, side by it's, side. Yeah, it's, and you know we're just we're getting ready. Like two yeah. guys just you know sitting sitting down, getting ready. It's <laughs> we, it's kind of like that time Michael Beasley was rubbing his teammate's knee and thought it was his own. It's kind of like that, you know. Sometimes we're, just, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to go. We're so dialed in. <laughs> oh man. 
I mean, all right. So, so now we're going to have to explain that story later in the hour. Uh, all right. So, uh, so make a Just... mental note of that. Uh, rubbing the wrong knee. Uh, we'll get to that here coming up uh, later on this hour on Fox Sports Radio. I, I love Michael Beasley. Uh, he's great, man. Uh, a yeah. lot, lot going on there with Michael Beasley. Um, all right. Yeah. So we're not a lot. Of, not not a lot going on. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, <laughs> And listen, I don't, I don't know what bong sound effects have to do with Michael Beasley. I think that's an unfair representation of the guy. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know about on. that. Yeah. Uh, that that seems right. pretty accurate. It, it, it's Well, look, I mean, I, I, this is the thing about this show. You and I prepare for this show. We get ready to go. We come out. We enter the room. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it takes one segment in before we get off the rails and we start talking about a pothead <laughs> who rubbed the wrong knee, thinking it was his own. Just, um, it's just bizarre. He, here's what I don't know. Is I, I've I've never smoked weed before in my life. I so, mean. like, I, you know, I'm sure people will challenge me on that. I, I'm, I'm serious. I never have. So I don't know if that's due to him being so high. He's he's not realizing it's his own knee, or if that was the cover for him wanting to rub his teammate's <laughs> knee. E- either way, I'm still Good baffled move. by all of it. But the video of it is absolutely amazing to watch him be surprised when his teammate looks at him and is like, what are you doing? That's not your knee. And he's like, oh, my bad. Yeah, like, 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 what do you do, like, when you – and let's go live uh, to our resident uh, rumored, rumored fan of the cannabis, or as some would say, the hippie lettuce, uh, Justin Cooper, to find out if this is a possibility with Michael Beasley rubbing the wrong knee, thinking it was his own, but it turned out it was a teammate. <laughs> Coop, is this a side effect? Is this a side effect from, uh, from the, uh, the green wolf, as they say? <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever heard anybody call it the Green Wolf, uh, but I can tell you it's 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 no it's no secret. I've smoked a lot of weed in my lifetime. Um, <laughs> I have never been so high to the point where I thought someone else's limb was mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know what was going on there. Kid, yeah. Were you able to pass it around to the to the fellas, or were you able to pass it around to the fellas just so they could see the facial expression of? I'm not sure who the, who the teammate was next to him, but more of Michael Beasley in sheer like shock that it wasn't his own knee. Like, yeah. there's no way, Justin, your body just goes numb at that point. No, I've ne- I've never <laughs> lost <laughs> sensation in my in my limbs. Uh, it's just it's it's a weird. Thing maybe you were that doing happened. it right, you know. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe you were doing it right, and, Justin. And look, look, I mean, and let's let's be honest here. I mean, Coop is a uh, is a superstar. I mean, you know, he's still getting checks from the movie Liar Liar, so you, he can afford the good stuff. You know, the stuff that doesn't make you rub somebody's limb thinking it's your own. So, so, I, I, so I, I think he gets the quality stuff here. We're not we're not talking about uh, you know some of this nickel and dime uh, material we got happening. I mean, I just the, the, like the moment in which. Beasley discovers that it was actually the wrong knee is is, is one, the one moment I actually want to be inside his mind. All right, so um, we, w- we will have the explanation on that whole story coming up later on in the hour. But uh, Brady Quinn, we have got ourselves some bad blood in the NFL. Uh, the Michael Thomas Saints relationship continues uh, to just uh, fall apart at the seams, uh, a report that came out over the weekend, uh, this according to Jeff Duncan of NOLA.com, that uh, Michael Thomas ignored multiple calls from the training staff and Sean Payton, the coach, and anybody within the organization. He basically ghosted them for like three months. Just decided, yeah, I don't want to talk to you guys. Um there had been rumblings that there were some issues that maybe him and his, his agent had kicked the tires on potential trades last season, that that was something that they would you know look into or last off season rather. And then they get into last year. He's a little bit banged up. He has a down year because of it. And then he elects to wait on having the surgery. So now he's going to have to miss the start of the season uh, because he waited too long to have the surgery, which Sean Payton and the Saints are pissed off about. But here we are. No Drew Brees. It's a brand new quarterback era, and Michael Thomas apparently doesn't want any part of the organization. I feel like the writing was on the wall a little bit last year with how he handled some things. And look, Michael Thomas went through a stretch for the first, what, four years of his career. He caught for over 1,000 yards, 
and and really in, in 19 and 18, you'd be hard pressed not to say he wasn't the best or one of the best wide receivers in the NFL in regards to production. I, I think what he saw though last year as as Drew Brees wound down the final year of his career was a glimpse of what life could be like without Drew and what this offense is going to transition to if it's Taysom Hill. And maybe even in practice, what this offense may look like with Jameis Winston. And I I think he's looking at it in his mind saying, man, I I don't know if if I want to get out of here, I don't know that I'll ever have a better chance because if, if I continue to stay here, my stats and productivity are going to go down. We're not going to throw the football as much as we have. I mean, think about this. Two years ago, he was targeted. Think about this. Targeted 185 times. <laughs> so go, go through it. Like, just think about this for a second. If you're throwing the football a lot in the NFL, you're going to have in an NFL season, what, 500, 600 attempts maybe? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about darn near a third of the passing attempts of the quarterback are going to that one specific player. And and, and look, there, maybe more teams should do that when you've got a number one wide receiver like Michael Thomas, and there's really not much else but besides Alvin Kamara that would make you say, like, that's who else we should target all the time. But, but the truth of the matter is, I think he looks at it and goes, I don't think it's going to get any better for me. Like, I'm not going to get the ball thrown my way that much more now moving forward. So if that's the case, I should start looking for some other places to go. And he's already under contract. He, si- he signed a, a good deal. And so he's, he's got the ability, I think, between injuries and then playing these sorts of games to tell Sean Payton, the club, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm disgruntled. Move on from me and exercise some of that, that player empowerment that we're seeing more players utilize right now. So I, I just think he's seen enough of what the future looks like. And he's like, I need to be somewhere else. Like, this isn't good for my career at this point. Yeah, his numbers in 2019 were stupid. A, 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 he had a, 149 catches, over 1,700 yards receiving. Uh, I, I, like, at, at some p- I mean, look, and I get it. He maybe he doesn't get along with Sean Payton or whatever, but it's so, like, can, can does anybody like tap him on the shoulder and said, "Hey, man, you've had it pretty good here." You know, just so you know, like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of wide receivers around the NFL that would love the opportunity to catch that many footballs for that much yeah. productivity. Yeah. He's five years into his career. He's already halfway to a thousand catches. It's I mean, nuts. come on, man. Like, I, well, I, that's I just wonder how this thing's gonna go. This so is, that's this the other really... side of the conversation with Michael Thomas, where I, I look at him, I go, I don't know, man. Grass isn't always greener. Like, you're in a good organization. You know they want to win. They, you've been close. You've been in playoffs. You know, if he looks at trying to go somewhere else just so that they can throw him the football more, then maybe he's anticipating them doing if it's Taysom Hill, or or even being able to give them the football be- like more and, and better. Um, if it's Jameis Winston, he might say, well, it's still less than what I have with Drew. You're missing out on the fact that Sean Payton's one of the best play callers in the league. And this is still an organization that if these two guys aren't it or, or if Ian Book and if they give him a shot and he's not it, they'll go find that guy. Like, they're not going to sit around on their hands and not try to make some moves, especially with what was rumored went on the past offseason or past couple off seasons with who they were trying to recruit. So the grass isn't always greener, and that's where if you look at him going somewhere else, he might not have the same productivity, and, and he might regret making some of the decisions that he's making right now. Yeah, it's uh, that'll be uh, this is going to be a wild situation to uh, check out, and I'm sure Sean Payton will keep his mouth shut when it comes to all this whole thing. He's he's been known to keep his mouth shut with things like this. Uh, it is Brady Quinn, Jonas Knox here. I'll kick the coverage, Fox Sports Radio, coming up in uh, 15 minutes from now here on FSR. Uh, we are going to get to uh, some more details on one of the more bizarre moments in the world of sports. It really caught Brady Quinn's eye, uh, and we're still trying to get some answers here, but we do have a little bit more details on that. Uh, we'll get to that here 15 minutes from now on FSR. Uh, Darius Leonard got paid, huh? It was only a matter of time because he was going to be the next guy up, but but uh, they lock him up. Uh, now they've got uh, you know Quentin Nelson. Eventually, he's going to get a long term contract extension, and uh, and away we go. The Indianapolis Colts uh, just building away. Hell of a roster there, Brady Quinn. If only they had a quarterback. How about that? <laughs> well, if they had a quarterback that was healthy, and yeah. uh, I think they're hoping Carson Wentz will be that guy. Uh, it, it, it's always funny watching press conferences for players that you know they want to be in another destination. And this obviously relates to Nick Foles 
who, um, I mean, look, he, he went out there, said his piece, talked about just keep trying to dice things up as the third stringer. And like, I've yeah. been in that position before. That's the kind of the mindset you have to have is because you believe you can play. At that point, no one else does. Or, or at least they're not willing to give you that shot unless it's you know, due to injury. And so there's a, there's a window, and there's a coach that he's had success with in Frank Reich, and he kind of said his piece last week about, you know, his relationship with Frank and everything else. I just – I don't think the Colts would ever do that to Carson Wentz. I, I, I don't – I think there's too much there. They know the circus it would bring, and as much as Frank Reich and Nick Foles might have a great relationship – there's no way they would bring in him to start any amount of games or even to be there, even as well as those two might have handled it while they were there together. There's no way they're willing to do that. I think they're, they're hoping that Carson Wentz is going to be in there week one or week two, and if he's not, they're willing to sacrifice a couple games instead of sacrificing maybe this, everything they gave up for Carson Wentz in a trade by bringing in Nick Foles and throwing that – that uh, that circus all right back into his lap, just in a different city. Well, listen, I happen to know when uh, Carson Wentz will be returning. Nobody else knows. I happen to know, uh, and I will give you that answer coming up uh, next hour here on Fox Sports Radio. How about that? How about that? I, like I, that. I know I like he's that. coming back. Yeah, I hope there's a betting angle to it because because I, I I do think there's going to be a chance. <clears throat> to, to lay some money on that. So I, I hope there's a betting angle on what you're going to say. Well, listen, I mean, there's a betting angle on everything nowadays. I mean, welcome to the uh, to 2021 when uh, several years ago you couldn't have a fantasy football convention in Las Vegas if you're Tony Romo uh, because the NFL would get mad at you. But now uh, Wrigley Field. Wasn't that like is, six years ago now? Are we yeah, still using long, that as an but example? I'm, ju- I'm just okay. saying, well, it's yeah. the only one I could think of at the time. Uh, and, oh. and I'm just, uh, now we got Wrigley Field. <laughs> Wrigley Field is now putting a sports book in. Uh, I got an idea. Yeah, Wrigley Field. How about you put a good baseball team in? Well, when, when's that going to happen? Are anybody going to do that, or are you going to continue to put a sports book in? It's can, can, I like a can I ask this question? Can I ask this question? Yeah. If the sports book doesn't perform, are they just going to trade the sports book away? Oh, of course. For someone else is that yeah, is that possible? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's is that, how, is that works. how that works? Yeah, okay. yeah that's how it works. Uh, right. But don't worry. Uh, you know, uh, as long as uh, as long as they got that one, man, they're going to milk that one World Series for the next seventy five years. I'm telling people right now that is a sinking ship. All right, there is water in the boat, and if you stay on, you're an idiot. All right, they are never winning another World Series. <laughs> Book it, mark it here, and, and actually take this audio, send it to Icy Hot Takes or whatever that Twitter account is. The Chicago Cubs will never win another World Series. You, you heard it here right now, August 9th, 2021. The Chicago Cubs will never win another World Series in the history I, of the franchise. I, I actually like this proclamation you're making because – I mean, I don't know how much longer we're going to be on this planet. Who has any idea? And, and I know you. And so you're factoring into th- that, that the Cubs will probably not win another one. Yeah. Within the next, let's say, what are we here 100 years? Are we here more like longer than on Earth? I like mean, you're factoring knows. into the science and everything else that encompasses us, like, like all just moving to Mars. Like you are factoring that into that decision right there. Yeah, it's over. It's, it, yeah. And it's not happening. Uh, like, so, I mean, look, if you got to see them win a, win a World Series, congratulations. Uh, you know, if, 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 you, if you had a child, a small child who was not around in 2016 that now is, and, and they're going to be growing up to be a Cub fan, just set the expectations right. Right. Just pull them aside and said, hey, what, who's your favorite baseball team? The Chicago Cubs. Okay, well, let Daddy tell you a little story. Here's the story about a franchise that you're never going to see win a World Series. So, <laughs> so you got a couple of choices here. You can go across town and become a White Sox fan, or you can, uh, you can go be a fan of, uh, of the Dodgers or be a fan of, of, of the Yankees or some of these other organizations that are actually willing to spend money uh, and not claim that they're broke and suffering, yet they're putting in a sports book inside the stadium. What an embarrassment. Uh, All right, let's get into this uh, quickly here. Uh, (laughs) Speaking of emotional, uh, I just wanted to give you a a moment to, um, you know, just sort of, you know, express uh, how heartbroken you are that the Olympics are no longer around. I just wanted to know, uh, you know, it's really, really bummed out that the Olympics are no longer with us here. Um, Brady Quinn, we say bye bye to the Olympics. It's over. And I just wanted to know emotionally how you're handling it today, knowing that we're not going to have any more Olympic. I I mean, look, I'm doing fine. I I do enjoy the Olympics. I'm one of those people who will watch pretty much anything and, and, and try to support our country. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think that I think one of the events I was watching that like group synchronized swimming or whatever it is. That's fine. Uh, 
I'll be honest with you, man. I was I was impressed. I was I, I was I was thinking to myself, one, how long they have to hold their breath underwater while they're doing some of this, how long it takes. Which at one point during the broadcast, uh, basically Russia, who competed as ROC, you know, for this Olympics, and they actually ended up winning the the women's synchronized swimming event by a long shot. Like they're they're by far and away the best to do it in the past like two decades. But they said. One of the women of the group literally left her child for 300 days to go train for it, and I was like, oh, "Well, Jesus. yeah, there's, I, I don't, I don't think anyone <laughs> is 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 going to be able to compete with that sort of dedication." Uh, and then you you watch them go out there and compete, and you go, "Oh, okay, I get it. They're they're literally perfect <laughs> the way they do this, but they're willing to sacrifice more than you are." Okay, yeah. just remember that every time. You you think about that that Russian synchronized swimming team that won gold. They're willing to go further lengths than you are pretty much to do anything in life. And right? now, did, did she have a say in the matter, or was she, uh, you know, because I mean, it is, yeah, it is that's, Russia. That's I mean. a question that I don't know, but <laughs> I'll tell you this much. They were incredible. I mean, they literally are up, completely upside down, like moving laterally, doing these leg kicks in unison. And I don't know how much time that takes to practice in a pool, but I would imagine it, it takes uh, plenty of days, plenty of hours in prep. Uh, but it was—it was really. I was—I was watching it, thinking to myself, like, this is not easy, you know. And and all that, all those, you know, unique sports go out the window now that the Olympics are over. Yeah, and, and also I would I would wonder as well too. Um, at at some point, I mean, if you haven't seen the show, the Netflix special Icarus, watch Netflix special Icarus because uh, there are some details about the uh, rushing doping and things like that that go along with it. And I'm not trying to accuse synchronized swimming of doping. I don't know if uh, of, if you know uh, PEDs would help a synchronized swimmer. Probably. That seems like something that would be more up your alley that you can break down, Brady Quinn. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, if you've seen if you've seen Icarus, the documentary, a lot of that stuff was going on back in the day i, I think saying. what happened with like poor uh, you know sports performance enhancing drugs is they've evolved now where you get sports that you wouldn't suspect taking them like uh, like golfers for example like people wouldn't suspect it but it's kind of a grind when you look at their tour and everything they have to do like they're they, they need more of like an endurance performance enhancing drug but i'm i'm sure there are, there's you know stuff out there like someone's doing something uh but yeah i wouldn't put it past these synchronized swimmers i, I would i would not put it past them it's uh, Outkick the Coverage here on Fox Sports Radio. He's Brady Quinn. I'm Jonas Knox. This is FSR. Coming up next, we are going to get to the bottom of one of the more bizarre moments in recent sports history that caught the attention of one Brady Quinn. It's yours next here on FSR. This is Outkick the Coverage. Hey, it's Ben, host of The Fifth Hour with Ben Maller, along with my trusty sidekick, David Gascon. Would mean a lot to have you join us on our weekly auditory journey. You're asking, what in God's name is The Fifth Hour? I'll tell you, it's a spinoff of The Ben Maller Show, a cult hit overnights on FSR. Why should you listen? Picture, if you will, a world where we chat with captains of industry in media, sports, and more every week. Explore some amazing facts about human nature and more. Listen to The Fifth Hour with Ben Maller on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Geico knows there are many reasons why you ride. From the exciting adventure of the daily commute to the peace of mind that Geico always has your back with 24-7 access to claim service and legendary customer service. But Pamela Mund had one reason in particular. My skin is extremely averse to most fabrics, except for the soft, buttery feeling of leather. Thankfully, I found my clan of leather lovers in the biking community. It's been life-changing. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope, it's Geico. Uh, yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Nope, it's from Geico because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. To show you how easy it is to file a claim with Geico, we hired a soap opera star. Gracious me, my car has storm damage and I've had to file a claim. Could it possibly get worse? Will my claims team leave me for someone else? Someone less intense? Um, no. Actually, when you file a claim with Geico, you get your own dedicated claims team who promises to stay with you throughout the process. Oh, I've never known such loyalty. I can't wait for the second season. 
Geico, great service without all the drama. He's Brady Quinn. I'm Jonas Knox. It's Outkick the Coverage here on Fox Sports Radio. Coming up top of next hour here, a little over 10 minutes from now, uh, Brady Quinn uncovered a little bit of a surprise in the Josh Allen contract. All right, A little bit of a, a surprise based on some of the early reports, and we will break that down here. Uh, some, uh, some stuff that you thought was actually uh, part of the deal, some things that you thought details the way the contract was structured. Apparently, things were a little bit different, so we're going to get to that here coming up uh, top of next hour here on Fox Sports Radio. Mr. Contract himself, Brady Quinn. Nobody breaks down an NFL contract like the great Brady Quinn. How's that? Yeah, I, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, I think we noticed some things. There were there were some surprises where we were like, oh, okay, this was a little different than what was initially reported, which tends to usually be the case. You know, it's it's always a little bit different than when the information first comes out. So we will get into that here a little over ten minutes from now. Um, so you mentioned this, uh, and this caught your eye because you saw this video, and and I vaguely remember seeing this back in the day. Uh, Michael Beasley, uh, who was a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, was uh, sitting on the bench. And there's video of him rubbing a teammate's knee. That teammate is Anthony Tolliver. And uh, (laughs) Anthony Tolliver is looking at him like, what are you doing? And Michael Beasley all of a sudden realizes that it's not his knee. And he apologized and said, oh, my bad. I thought that was my knee. And so it begs the question, did he actually think that that was his knee or uh, was he intentionally trying to rub Anthony Tolliver's knee? Now, I could just tell you this. You and I have been working together and doing this show for, what, five, six years now? Long yeah, time yeah, at this point. Yeah. Um, if you were to ever rub my knee... And then claim that you thought it was your own. I'm just giving you the heads up, and I love you. I'm calling Scott Shapiro, and I'm saying, hey, I need a new partner. I can't do this anymore. Like, that's a wrap on this. Like, that is a wrap on this. Uh, uh, whatever whatever it's going to be, uh, let it be. But uh, but that's no longer going to be part of my uh, part of my resume, working with Brady Quinn, if he's going to rub my knee and then, and then pretend like he, he thinks it's his knee. Just a very bizarre situation all the way through and through on the Minnesota Timberwolf bench back in the day. I mean, very hasn't pleasant. Michael Beasley had issues? with his knee in his career yeah but what did he lose feeling of it well that's so my only my only question is yeah like when you have surgery sometimes you lose some sensation or feeling like oh, for, Christ for example in my, in my foot I've got toes that I, I can't feel anything certain portions of my foot I can't feel anything so I, I told you I had, I had pins shoved in my right index finger I have no feeling on, on the edge of my right ind- index finger from that surgery so you know, maybe I'm trying to make a case for Michael Beasley here. Maybe he just, you know, thought it was his knee and, you know, maybe he just iced it. We don't know. I mean, he, he was, it was during a game on a bench, which kind of makes it interesting um, that in that moment he would, he would attempt to rub another man's knee. Yeah. But either way, I, I'm just saying if he had surgery on that knee, maybe there's the chance that he just usually doesn't feel it. And wasn't paying attention, then realized like, oh, that's not my knee at all. But I guess you'd notice if it was your knee because it would feel very different. Like your knee and my knee would feel very, very different. Yeah, Yeah. it definitely would. Um, Now, uh, you brought up a potential, uh, you know, was he smoking, you know, some weed? Did did the weed get the best of him? And all of a sudden it made him uh, think something different. I can tell you a story here uh, on the air. Uh, I had a buddy who got absolutely annihilated back in the day. We were, he was, I think he was, we were like 21, 22 years old. So he goes over to another buddy's apartment and the buddy who lives at this place, uh, cause he knew that this guy was going to be spending the night. He also knew that he had been drinking pretty heavily. Uh, he went upstairs to go to sleep. He hears some noise down in the kitchen. He comes downstairs and my other buddy is got the, one of the drawers in the kitchen out and he's he's sitting down trying to go to the bathroom because he's so drunk he thinks he's in the bathroom. So my, the guy who lives there says, hey, man, what are you doing? He goes, get out of here. I'm trying to use the bathroom. He goes, get out of here. This is the kitchen. What are you doing? <laughs> so no, no, get out of here. I gotta, I gotta, I'm trying to use the bathroom. So finally, he, he, they, they end up, you know, uh, they get him out of there. They, they clean everything up. You know, he just, you know, just went number one. Uh, but they clean everything up, and, and they t- take him over, and he passes out on the couch. So he's telling all of us this story the next day. 
and everybody's rolling. And of course, my buddy's like, has no recollections. Oh man, I don't even know. I'm sorry. I don't even know why I did that. I don't know what I was doing, et cetera, et cetera. And I told him, I said, you guys are burying the lead here. Like, not only was he so drunk that he thought the kitchen was the bathroom, but he was so drunk that he thought he was a woman because he was squatting down to go number one. <laughs> he literally had no, like, he had no, he had no, he had no idea what he was, literally had no idea. And I asked him, I was like, why did you do that? Like, why didn't you just go outside? Why didn't you just stand up? He goes, I don't know. I forgot. Like, he just, he, he had no recollection of what was happening. So, I, I'm not going to sit here and bail out Michael Beasley that maybe he was on a little bit of the something and he, and he rubbed the wrong knee. But I have seen a moment like that before to where people yeah. forget everything about their own body and try and proceed as everything you, you, is normal. You mean the green wolf uh, that you yes. referred to that, the that hippie that he's never heard before in his life? Yes, the hippie lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Look, look man, uh, don't, uh, don't pick up my vernacular. It's what I do here on Fox Sports Radio. <laughs> Have you been to Express lately? People can't get enough of their clothes. They're like insta-confidence boosters. The jeans come in a temp control fabric that keeps you comfortable no matter the weather. And the t-shirts, hands down, they'll feel like they're made of the softest fabric you've ever worn. And get this, the suits have stretch and look sharp. Like, what? How do they do that? Everyone's raving about the newest looks from Express. Just check out the five-star reviews. See for yourself and shop the latest at Express.com and in stores. Have you ever watched a classic film and thought, wait, was that bad? Tossed Popcorn is a new movie review podcast for the common moviegoer from Stanford-educated idiots Liana Holston, that's me, and me, Sienna Jekyll. Tossed Popcorn yanks the classics off their pedestal with blunt irreverence, genuine confusion, and witty banter. Tune in as we review a different film each week from AFI's 100 Greatest Movies list. Colonels will fly as two tired women throw their hands up in exasperation and yell, this won the Oscar? Listen and subscribe to Tossed Popcorn on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.